Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can create a forest like this. And this is going to be our result from the end of the tutorial, so pretty dang cool. Alright, so let's break down this scene real quick, and then we'll get to making a forest in a second after that. As you can see here, once you leave camera view, the illusion completely crumbles, and it's just a bunch of planes with tree textures on them. Then we got the sky in the background, and we've got this monster guy in the middle. So it's actually really a simple scene. And there's a couple of fun elements I'd like to share with you here. Um, first of all, for these heads that are just kind of moving around, I actually animated them in real time. And if I just pause the timeline here, go into pose mode, just grab bone, and delete all these keyframes. What I did was from, actually it was probably from front view, I just enabled auto keyframes and then played the animation ahead and then just grabbed it by hitting R twice, and then you can rotate it around, just make him do weird stuff. And then, when you play that back, it has just recorded all that animation info, and it's playing back what you just did, which is pretty fun. So that's how I animated most of the Siren Head monster. It was really super quick and easy. Obviously he's not moving around that much, so it wasn't too hard. But a nice little hack for you there to animate things super quickly. For the camera, there's just a couple of rotation keyframes here. And it just kind of pans up on the monster. And also, I've got a motion tracking tab open over here. And I just placed down four tracks real quick on this video. And then solved it as a tripod solve back in layout. You can see this camera actually has a camera solver constraint on it. So it's got some nice realistic camera motion, which I've taught about before, but that really helps add a lot of realism to it. So yeah, that's pretty much the scene. There's a few limitations to this tree technique that I'm about to show you here. And the biggest one is that if you light it really strongly, you can see kind of around the edges of these, there's some white border, which is basically just the bloom of the bright sky behind the tree just kind of bleeding through. We'll get to that in a second, but probably going to want to have it just as a silhouette, which can still make for a really nice looking shot. And the other pretty obvious limitation that I just showed you here is once you go too far from the camera view, things start to fall apart. But let's just hop into a new scene, and I'll show you how I do this forest type thing. I'm just going to delete the cube and the light, and with images as planes enabled, I'm just going to go to import and import images as planes. Now I've got these three textures here, they're just dark trees taken against a bright sky, and if we just grab those and import them as planes, we can see them drop in here. I'm going to switch to cycles real quick. So let's make it so that the sky is not here anymore and it's just the trees. So we're going to do that in shading, and here in the shading tab, I'm just going to grab this texture, move this guy down a little bit, go shift A, and add in a transparent shader. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can hold Shift and Control and just right click and drag between two nodes and that will mix them together, which is what we want. But this time we want the transparent to be in the bottom and we really don't need this alpha line here. I don't know what that's doing there. But what we're going to do next is go Shift A and Converter and Color Ramp. And I'm just going to drop the color into the factor value here and then this color into this factor value. And we can't see it very well in the material preview, so I'm going to go into Rendered and hey look at that, the sky's pretty much gone. If we look closely at the color ramp node by going Control and Shift and clicking on it, we can see kind of a black and white representation where white is completely see-through and black is opaque. And I'm just gonna crunch down the white values a little bit and then maybe bring up the black values as well so there's some higher contrast. It's still a little bit there, you can see. Once this turns into the background color, we'll know that the sky is gone. So if we crank up the white, there we go, that should be all right. The trade-off here is the higher you crank up the contrast, the more trees you lose. But since I took a pretty nice high resolution picture, we've still got quite a bit of those, so that's good. Alright, this is pretty good here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to box select all these nodes and go Control c and then select this plane, which still had that original material, and I'm just going to delete this out of the middle and go Control v drop these boys in, just plug them all in, um, color goes to factor here, and to base color. And then in the end, our shader goes to surface. Cool, that is doing the exact same thing now. That's nice. Now let's select this one, and this is gonna be a tiny bit more tricky just because the values are different. But I'm gonna grab everything, plug it in as before. There we go. All right, so you can see here, the sky is just kinda there still. So what we're gonna do is 
Maybe I'll drop down the blacks a little bit and then crank up the whites a little bit more. There we go. Now we've still got some nice clarity here and that see-throughness should not be an issue. All right. So these are all rendered and if we take a light and kind of shine them at them, you can see that look that I meant before with the white borders. And like I mentioned, that just doesn't look super good. So I'm actually going to delete the light here and just use the background settings here to light it a little bit. So we can actually maybe keep that pretty dark, but if we go like this, we could maybe get kind of a sunset look. I'm not gonna worry too much about the background. I'm just gonna get a little bit of a color there. And the brighter we turn this, the more it lights the textures. And it doesn't look too bad when you light them with the background, although that is way too bright there. So let's turn that back down to around there. And let's go into the layout tab so we can actually see what we're doing and just throw together a simple forest here. So I'm going to hit 1 on the number pad and Control and Alt and 0 on the number pad to place my camera where my view is. I'm just going to grab this and move it up a little so we can see the plane. And these guys are not oriented right. So I'm going to go R and Z, 90. There we go. I really liked the way this texture kind of frames the edges of the shot. So what I'm going to do is scale that up and put it in front. I'm just hitting S to scale it and G to grab it. And what we're gonna do now is just grab it on the Y axis and move it a little bit closer to the camera. Something like that, maybe. Scale it up a little bit more. There we go, that makes a nice frame. And then with these guys here, we're going to add in our pine trees. If you hit Z and then go to wireframe mode, you can actually see planes, which kind of helps. And I'm in top view here, so I can kind of see the whole picture. I'm just placing these pine tree planes a little bit farther away and a little bit bigger. So if we look in rendered view, hey, we got pine trees. Nice. And we can just grab these and rearrange them however we want. Maybe we want a little bit of a gap there in the middle. Maybe we don't. Maybe we want it to be a forest. And so if we want it to be a bit more like forest instead of just a really simple tree line, we can duplicate these and just grab them and move them back. And if we take a look here, sometimes you can get away without doing anything fancy. Like in this case, it's all right. You can't really see that much repeating. Although if we look closely here, you can see the top of this tree is kind of like the top of that tree. So one thing that'll kind of help with just like instantly recognizable repeating is if we scale it a little bit different and if we scale it on a negative like s x and negative one i'll show you what that actually looks like in material preview if we go s x and then just scale it negatively it just flips it around and mirrors it so things are a little bit hard to recognize as repeating and we can just do a little bit of forest scaping here if we want to match things up so they're not so obvious maybe we go like this I don't know, something like that, maybe. There we go, that's not bad. I like that positioning. All right, so we've got our forest here, and it's all spaced out. I would probably recommend grabbing the camera and just kind of tilting it up like the pictures were when they were taken. So I'm going to grab this and move it down, and then just RX to rotate it up a little bit. That way, if we want to put models in or anything, they'll be kind of matching up. And now we've got a forest, and you can just kind of pan around and look at it. Obviously, if we look too close over here, we can start to see edges, which is not good. Let's scale this guy up a little bit. There we go. Oh, you still see the edge, but obviously <laughs> that's pretty dramatically moved there. So we can just have some nice rotation here, and you can even have some movement, and it will actually look pretty 3D, because it is 3D. <laughs> now this is pretty realistic. But if we render it, we can see it is just kind of a mess, and it's really hard to see any distinction in between anything. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's some trees. But if we want it to look a little bit better, what we can do is add in a volume. So I'm just going to go Shift-A and add in a cube and scale this up so it kind of encompasses the whole scene like that. And then I'm going to go back into the shading tab real quick, add a new material for this cube. And instead of a principled, we want a shift A, shader, and principled volume. And with this little guy, we want the volume to plug into the volume rather than the surface, because that'll mess stuff up. And we want to turn density down and have emission strength super low, so maybe a 0.001-ish. There we go. Look at that. 
Now we can see the difference between the different layers of trees we have, and that'll really help to separate things. And of course, you can scale this up if you want to make it a little bit more encompassing. And we can also change the emission color, which is pretty cool. I like a bit of a blue myself. That kind of contrasts nicely with a little bit of an orange background. Something like that. And now, you got yourself a forest. Now, of course, I'd recommend adding some compositing effects on this to just kind of glue it all together. We're not going to go over that in this tutorial, but it's always a recommended thing. So yeah, that's pretty much the tutorial. If you found this helpful and you'd like to see more tutorials like it, there is a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements. And when you click that, it will add you to my email list. And I'll make sure the first thing I send you are a pack of hydraulic kit bash elements made for blender users like yourself. And these will just give you a bit of a jump start when you're working on mechanical projects. The other thing you should be aware of when you're on that email list is every Saturday when I upload a tutorial, I just mail out to that list so that you can be up to date on all the tutorials. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.